Cypress Development Corp's flagship lithium project is located just east of Alba Marley's Silver Peak Mine in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. A 12-hole exploration drill program for lithium-enriched claystone on Cypress's 100% controlled properties is now underway. Cypress Development Corp trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the pink CYDVF, and on Frankfurt C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Christopher Mullen from the TechnicalTraders.com. Welcome back to the show, Chris, and I hope you had a great New Year hey. celebration. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. And yeah, it's been a great holidays and New Year's uh, holiday time here. Not too cold for you? You know what? We're in Florida trying to get some heat, and today was is four degrees. It is freezing. Uh, it says four degrees in the low, or it feels like zero. <laughs> so, and here we are, West Palm Beach, and it's zero pretty much. It's crazy, but uh, you know, this is the real first cold day we've had, and uh, I can't complain. But it's amazing how cold it is way down here. Wow! So you should have brought the snowmobile uh, mitts instead of the swimsuit. Yeah, you know, I brought just a thin sweater, and it's not enough. <laughs> Chris, uh, the Dow Jones topped 25,000 points today. Some people are saying it could go to 40,000, perhaps. Well, yeah, well, you know, 25,000, that's a pretty big number. That's a whole number. It's a nice, big, fat, round number that people have talked about for a long time, and I do think the Dow will continue to, to keep grinding and, and, and muscling its way higher. 40,000 might be a little bit of a stretch. Uh, usually when we see, you know, crazy bullish outlook like that, especially in this type of market condition where there's, there's no fear, the VIX is low and everyone's making money as long as you buy and hold stocks. It's just right now we're in that feeding frenzy. And when you see people with these crazy high valuations and, you know, the news is good and all these tax benefits are coming out, you know, the markets have rallied into all of this. Uh, to me, it's a warning sign. 2,500, I'd like to see where the, the month closes, uh, if it closes uh, below 2,500 or if it can hold above it. And that'll be a big, a pretty big signal because, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of people kind of coming in and starting to sell into this market at 2500 and because it's getting this big exposure the breakout of 2500 or 25000 sorry uh i i think it's going to get a lot of investors to pile in and we could see a real squeeze up here higher in the next uh, week or two but i think by the end of the month we might actually see a lot of that get given back and by big institutional selling um selling on this this news this really bullish vibe and and, and sentiment What's been leading the Dow to this new record high? You know, we've been seeing money really kind of pile into the tech sector, and uh, we're seeing some of the, you know, the big fangs. They 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 took a good haircut uh, a couple of weeks ago here, but they've really started to muscle up and push prices higher. And uh, in the last three days, we've seen a very strong push in tech stocks, and today uh, being. Uh, Thursday, we're seeing a breakout in the financials, and uh, you know, I think I think the combo of these uh, is very powerful. Definitely moves moves the market, and uh, the financials are really just starting what looks to be uh, a, a pretty decent move that could last four or five days and could be a very strong uh, rally here, that a pop in price. So, I think that we're seeing large caps really start to kind of move into favor here. With the fangs, you said they, they took a bit of a, a haircut. Are they still just wildly popular then, even though everybody says they're vastly overpriced? Yeah, of course. Yeah, they're, they're very, you know, they're, they're the most popular stocks out there. That's why they keep going up and why every dip is seen as an opportunity, which at this point it is. So money keeps, when those stocks pull back, money just piles in and, and drives those prices to new highs. You know, you look at Facebook, you see some pretty big selling, you see three or four or five days of strong selling, and then you see two or three days of a big rally right back and push to new highs, and, and it's just the way the market is right now. So it's the big brand name stocks that, you know, the average investor right now is piling into the market, and the average investor doesn't really know a whole lot of stocks. They know the big brands. They know 
Facebook, they know LinkedIn, they know all the big, you know, all the big uh, large cap names, and those are the ones where money goes to, and that's what we see. We we have been seeing some pretty strong selling in the big leading stocks, but it's bought right back up by investors looking at, oh, there's a big down day. I want to buy a bunch. It's a, it's a good price, and investors pile into those names. So it's it's all marketing. The bigger the company, the more investors it seems to attract at this stage of uh, of a bull market. Doesn't matter that some of them don't have any real assets. It's all word of mouth and advertising. Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't seem to matter at this point. Uh, eventually, uh, when the music stops and we when we go into some type of a market correction, a significant market correction, those stocks will probably uh, struggle a little bit more than other ones. But at this point, it it you know, it, as long as the company's in the media. And they've got earnings. It, a lot of investors just don't care. They want to buy something that's been going up, is up big, and they expect it to keep going up. And that's where investment money just continues to pile in. You say people like big names that they recognize. We keep having companies change their name in midstream. I'm thinking of Google changing their name to Alphabet. Nobody refers to them as Alphabet. They still call them Google. Yeah, I yeah, I know. It's uh, I I've never even called them Alphabet because they're Google. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really tough. I, I don't I don't I don't know the theory behind it. I haven't followed why they did it, but uh it is it's definitely strange when you know something so big changes their their name in a drastic way like that. We'll have more with Christopher Mullen right after the break. MGX Minerals is revolutionizing the new energy economy with patented lithium extraction technology replacing traditional solar evaporation using low-cost, low-energy nanofiltration. The first system of this paradigm shift technology is currently being commissioned. MGX Minerals trades on the CSE, symbol XMG, the OTCQB, symbol MGXMF, and Frankfurt, symbol 1MG. For more information, visit our website, mgxminerals.com. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp, RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain's Brunswick property is located in the Ridout Shear Zone in Ontario, with grab samples running as high as 32 grams per ton gold. A follow-up drill program to test numerous targets located by recent groundwork is planned for early 2018. Please visit our website at rmroyalty.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, what do you see happening in the crude oil space? Yeah, you know, crude oil has had a re really nice rally uh, last year. And just yesterday, the price finally hit a target we've been waiting and expecting crude oil to get to, which is $62 per barrel. And this is a really significant level. This is a, a high that was hit back in 2015. And when we, I expect price to tag it here and probably roll over for uh, several days, if not a multi-week correction at this point. And right now, it's catching some media exposure. I've seen a lot of uh, people talking about it on the on the chart forums that this is a critical level, and uh, the market, to me, and cycle analysis are showing that this should be an intermediate high. It might linger up at this sixty-one, sixty-two, sixty-three dollar per barrel level for a week or so. But overall, I have a feeling we're going to see crude oil sell off here and get back down to uh, potentially the $54 per barrel uh, area and uh, and wind down. I think there's a lot of sellers lurking up at this price. They're just waiting to see if there's going to be a follow-through breakout above this or if we're just going to struggle here like we are today where it's a doji candle, which means the buyers and sellers are even. Price is sitting right at $62 per barrel. So it's definitely a, a very, very much so a technical play and with cycles pointing to lower prices over the next month, I think we're going to see this uh, the crude oil top out here and start to fade lower or at least trade sideways for uh, about a month or so. Has the trouble in Iran been a factor in the price? Uh, you know, it probably has played a role. Obviously, any issues based around crude oil will, will help lift prices. But uh, uh, overall, the technical charts have been pointing to this $62 per barrel mark for months, and the markets have finally tagged it. You could you could possibly say it was based on news, but the charts, from a technical standpoint, and using analysis and and forecasting methods, you know, this price tag here was marked months ago, and uh, it doesn't matter what the news was in between, really, because uh, 
the chart prices were pointing to it. So, uh, you know, all that news could be factored in way in advance, which typically it is. Uh, but to me, it's purely a technical trade uh, from this standpoint. We'll have more with Christopher Mullen right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Keep informed. Receive our weekly recap of thought-provoking articles, podcasts, and radio delivered to your inbox for free. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage, HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're talking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, what do you think is going to happen to gold and silver in the new year? Yeah, well, gold put in a really significant low about uh, about 20 days ago or so, and we were expecting a cycle low at this point. We were actually expecting uh, gold to kind of top out around uh, the 1280 level, and that was when we had a cycle high. This is about a week ago. And instead, crude oil, or sorry, gold and silver and miners, the whole sector in general, uh, broke the, the cycles, broke out to, to break some previous highs and have bucked the trend. And the way cycle analysis works in, in momentum, uh, is when you break a pattern, you usually go double the distance of what you expected. So we had this rally up to this, uh, 1280 level. And it broke that level, and now we're just about to reach the second target where price should reach. And I think we're going to see precious metals continue to grind higher here for another three or four days. But overall, the momentum here is is finally starting to get overextended. We're getting bigger, longer updates, bigger updates in the market, which means volatility is increasing in price action, which means there's uh, instability in price. So any day we could see a very sharp pullback in gold, silver, or miners, and for it to flip and flop with some big up days and big down days over the next week, and uh, probably put in a little bit of a top or consolidation pattern. So overall, the downtrend that has been plaguing uh, precious metals since more or less September of last year has finally been broken. We now have a very strong momentum move to the upside. We've got a higher high, and now we're just waiting for the market to kind of top out here consolidate trade sideways or pull back a little bit to create a higher low and an entry point for us to get long for potentially the next fairly significant leg higher in precious metals that could spark a bull market in uh, in gold silver in miners but we still got quite a ways to go on a percentage basis but this is the start of a new uptrend that uh, is taking place what would you prefer gold or silver i am a fan of both uh, i've I've been in positions where I've, I've nailed the, the timing and I got in gold and silver exploded and gold barely did anything and vice versa. So I am all about always owning. I like to have all three. I always like to have a little SLV or the gold fund, a little GLD or SLV, sorry, the silver, GLD, the gold, and a little GDX or GDXJ, uh, gold mining stocks. And I just buy uh, some shares of all three of them because you never know which one is really going to take off. And it's it's really nice to kind of have the basket because some days uh, others underperform others and, and some outperform really well. And it creates a really nice basket. And, you know, there's another ETF out there called GLTR is the symbol. GLTR. And it owns a basket of precious metals, uh, not stocks, but physical metals. And I like that because it's a good gauge of what the precious metal sector in general is doing because it's not just gold and silver in miners, you've got palladium, platinum, and uh, different metals in there. So I like that one, too, because it has a basket of different precious metals, not just gold and silver, and it gives you a really well-rounded feeling of what precious metals the whole sector is doing versus just a couple of metals. And, uh, I, and again, you never know which one of these metals is going to go ballistic. And uh, sometimes it's not even gold, silver, it could be something else like platinum or palladium that take off. So you can really get a nice broad basket basket for precious metal sector with these four ETFs that I talked about and uh, and really ride the entire sector up. And sometimes you can trim some off 
And uh, you can take advantage of the, the swing trading if you're an active trader with these because sometimes some will outperform. You can trim off. You can add on some type of pullback. Uh, so that's kind of what I do with a basket of ETFs. Chris, thank you so much for taking time out of your holiday to talk with us. Always a pleasure, Jim. Thanks for having me on the show. My guest has been Chris Vermeulen from technicaltraders.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.